Good morning, saints, and welcome to our Sunday service. Our gospel is found in the book of Matthew, chapter 28. This piece of scripture is popularly known as the Great Commission. The Great Commission is about Christ sending out the disciples into the world. And so he gives, he gives them a charge and invites them to expand the ministry and the story of God in the manner that he had taught them. So at this point in time, the disciples had been spending time with Christ. They had learned from both observing and having conversations with him. And Christ was saying, I am now handing over the joy, handing over the responsibility and handing over the core of the story. And that is the ability to share it with all nations. So he says to the disciples, therefore, go and make, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything as I have commanded you. And so this baptism that Christ speaks of, Richard Raw defines as the sacred dance of the triune God. In the sacred dance of the triune God, God the Creator, Christ as the pain bearer, and the Holy Spirit as the giver of life. This is the dance that we're all invited to. We are invited to participate and to be part of community. And as we journey in community, we see moments of great triumph and we go through moments of great pain. But also as community, we go through moments of great liberation, moments of great inspiration. And it is the story of the triune God. And so when we look at the Trinity, we realize it is three persons who are one, synchronized and working together in, in making sure and achieving the goodness of humanity. And this is the story that we are being invited to. And so like the disciples, we are being asked and tasked to go out into the world, to go out and share this gospel. And what is interesting is that God, or rather Jesus in the story, does not give a description of who exactly the disciples are to talk to. He says to them, disciple all nations and ask them to obey everything that I have taught you and commanded you. And so, Jesus Christ, if you want to continue with the understanding of us being involved in a sacred dance with God, Jesus Christ is asking us to dance with him. And so, Jesus has showed us the moves. Jesus has showed us what it means to be in community. Jesus has showed us what it means to love our enemies. Jesus has showed us what it means to interpret and to understand scripture within the context of the places we find ourselves in. And now that we have these moves, now that we are synchronized in this understanding of a dance of love, a dance of passion, a dance of humility and humanity, we are now being asked to go and take these moves that we've learned and share them with everyone that encounters us. And so like God is to us the creator, Christ is the pain bearer and the Holy Spirit is the giver of life. We are invited to be exactly that in our communities. Sometimes we will have to be the ones who bear the pain of the history that our world comes from. Sometimes we are the ones who need to make a decision to give and to breathe life into the history of the world that we are in that will be told about us later on. And so as we reflect in these scriptures, we are reminded that we are both saints and sinners. We are both worshippers and doubters. Some of us can worship God and some of us have the ability to truly speak of a God that brings life to others. And some of us are full of doubt. Some of us are full of questions. Some of us are sometimes uncertain, but all of us in this community of worshipers in the sacred dance are synchronized. All of us become one, like the triune God. And this is the gospel of, of the Trinity. This is the story of the sacred dance of God, of Christ, and the Holy Spirit. 
And so we are invited to be part of this. As Anglicans, at the end of our service, every time or every Sunday rather, we are told to go out into the world. Because we've received scripture, we've read the gospels, we've reflected on this gospel, and now we are invited to go out into the world and make disciples to love and serve God. And if we are to love and serve God, we need to be able to love and serve God even when it's most difficult. The past few weeks have been quite scary when we're looking at social media. They are complaints, they are shouts for us to be more just as a society. They are cries and pains around the world of inequality and unjust brutality that we see from those in power. And so the world is yearning for love, the world is yearning for equality, the world is yearning for a humanity that is involved in a sacred dance of love. And so as we sift through our feeds on social media, as we read articles of people who say things or do things that hurt and harm others, let us be reminded that we are saints and sinners. We are worshippers and doubters. None of us are perfect. But the whole point of community is that when we see one of us dancing to a different song and is not synchronized with what society and community is, we are asked to invite them into this dance. We are asked to invite and constantly challenge each other to say, my brother, my sister, come dance with me. But in order for us to be dancing and being in rhythm, there needs to be a conversation. There needs to be an ability to be vulnerable and to allow others to lead us when we can't. But sometimes we are also being asked to just let go of our guards and allow the music to speak to us. See, the thing about dance that is so beautiful is that it captures emotions, it captures vulnerability, it captures presence. Being in a dance is also just about being in a moment. And what I love about this idea of us being involved in a dance with humanity and a dance with history, with the present and the future, is that God is the dance itself. And so in all that we do, we are reminded that our God is in us, working through us, and it's always out of us. So God can be experienced around us through the people that we encounter, through nature, through animals. God can be experienced inside of us, how we feel and, and sometimes how we are moved in our spirits when we see acts of kindness and acts of love. And sometimes God works in the absence, the absence of peace, the absence of, of justice, the absence of equality. Even in those spaces, God is at work. And all that we are being asked to do is to synchronize. All we are being asked to is to listen to the teachings of a Christ that taught of love without boundaries. A Christ that had the ability to draw people without asking questions or without even ask them, asking them to be anything else but their true self. And so my brothers and sisters, I invite you to look at the Trinity as a sacred dance. A dance that is about relatedness. It is about friendship, it is about community, and it is about always being synchronized and moving together. And what makes this dance most powerful is our ability to be present. And so let us be present. Like the triune God, let us be in relationship with one another. Let us be in community in a way that invites us all to just be ourselves and to be humble, to allow ourselves to be vulnerable, speaking our truth, but also breathing life. And so as I started off, I defined God as the creator, Christ as the pain bearer, and the Holy Spirit as that which constantly gives us new life. This is the gospel, a gospel that is about creation, a gospel that is about pain and sorrow, but a gospel that promises us new life. Let us be the life and the light in the world.
And so the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you all now and always. Amen.